Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this weekend is a holiday in America as well as in here in the UK, and it's called Memorial Day. And it's the day like our Memorial Day with the cenotaphs on November. Um, it's very similar where they remember their, their veterans and the people who've gone before. So Jeff and I thought it would be a good time to re-release a video he made over a year ago uh, about a very poignant story. So have a look at this and see what you think. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's Jeff. And I would like to tell you a story that begins in St. Louis, Missouri. While traveling through St. Louis, I happened to go to a place where there was two statues for sale. Statues that was rescued from a building that was demolished in 1884. The building was actually built in 1872 and it was demolished in 1884. The building was built for the Mutual Life Insurance Corporation, which was based in New York City, and one of its leading corporate officers was Frederick Cromwell. And I began to think about a story that involved him that happened a long time ago. Frederick Cromwell was born in 1843, and he had two sons and two daughters. The older son became in charge of the New York Stock Exchange and the two daughters were twins, Dorothea and Gladys. The twins lived in New York City at 535 Park Avenue and here we have a picture of them enjoying a carriage ride on Park Avenue before the start of World War I. At the start of World War I, the twin sisters immediately went down and joined the Red Cross. Because they were unmarried and had no children, they always volunteered for the most dangerous assignments and were constantly bombed, constantly shot at, and they saw the absolute worst parts of World War I trench warfare in France. A January 30th, 1919 New York Times story called them angels, praising them for visiting injured soldiers and befriending refugee children. In addition to their first class work on day and night service. After the canteens closed in the height of the war, the sisters worked as aides at evacuation hospitals. Their immediate supervisor in the Red Cross wrote a glowing report. It said, they are the most liked and my most devoted workers. When their time was over, they qualified to come home, but instead they stayed. They endured the horrors of war month after month and eventually it took its toll. At the end of the war, they stuck around and they helped with the evacuation of all of the injured soldiers. But eventually, it was their time to come home. It took their brother Seymour to come over to France and to tell them that their work was done and it was time to come home, that they had done their part, but they didn't really want to leave. They wanted to stay until every last soldier came home. Finally, they were ordered to board the SS La Lorraine, which was due to sail to New York City. The ship got underway and the night watchman was posted. He was an Army Private Jack Pemberton and he was on duty on the upper deck of the La Lorraine the night it started for America. As he huddled against a brisk wind and cold mist, he saw two women wearing black capes walking arm in arm talking. 
They separated, and one of the women climbed atop the ship's rail and disappeared. The second woman followed, also climbing the rail and disappearing into the blackness. Pemberton recalled that he heard two faint splashes. He ran to the corporal in charge of sentries, who alerted the bridge and the alarm was sounded. But it took 15 minutes, during which the ship traveled five miles before the ship could be slowed. By that time, the river channel was too narrow for the ship to turn around and search for bodies. It appears the Cromwell twins, subjected to the horrors of war, raging from shelling to dealing with the carnage of injured and dead, had been the victims of shell shock, a term that emerged from the horrors of World War I. It is what today we would call post-traumatic stress syndrome. Although it seems unfathomable, they had seen just too much war to go home. Their bodies were recovered a month later. Their bodies were buried in a lovely cemetery on a hill overlooking the city of Paris, a cemetery devoted to American soldiers from World War I. After their death, a poem was found in their personal effects a poem written by Gladys Cromwell. No doubt this active will, so bravely steeped in sun, this will has vanquished death and foiled oblivion. But this indifferent clay, this fine experienced hand, so quiet and these thoughts that all unfinished stand, Feel death as though it were a shadowy caress, and win and wear a frail, archaic wistfulness. I leave you now on a rainy day in front of the train station in Effingham, Illinois. My hope for all of you is that you never see too much war to go home. Remember everyone, be good to each other, do good deeds, and I will see you on the next adventure.